A grandma sitting gracefully on a cushioned divan, her sari draped elegantly. The living room is adorned with colorful clothes and cushions, giving it a warm and inviting ambiance. The aroma of spices is still in the air as the family just enjoyed a delicious Indian meal in their beautiful kitchen. Indian classical music playing softly in the background on her favorite radio. The laughter of her grandchildren echoed through the room as they were playing some traditional games. The grandchildren ran up to her and said, Grandma, Grandma, it's almost bedtime. Grandma smiles and says affectionately, Ah, my little ones, the day has flown by, hasn't it? Are you ready to rest and have your dreams painted with stars? Enthusiastically, her grandchildren say, Yes, but Grandma, can you please tell us a story first? Grandma playfully says, Oh, you know the magic words, don't you? Well, I suppose I can share a story or two before you head off to dreamland. The grandchildren sat down impatiently on a sofa and said, Grandma, please tell us a story about Panchatantra. We heard that there are a lot of stories in it, but why is it called so? Who wrote it? And why is it so important? Oh, my super impatient kids. Hold on. I'm so glad that you ask all this. My little ones are growing up, huh? I will tell all about it to you said Grandma. Yes, Grandma, we are super excited to hear it from you. Please start, said the grandchildren. And so Grandma started the story, asking them to be quiet until she finished the story. Long, long ago, my dear kids, a king called Amara Shakti ruled over the kingdom of Mahilaropya, somewhere in South India. He had a flourishing kingdom. All his subjects respected him. He had good relations with neighboring kingdoms, and so he had no fear of his kingdom being attacked by any enemy. Yet the king was not happy. You know why? Because he had three foolish sons. They were lazy too. The king was worried about who would look after his kingdom after his death. Then one day the king called all the learned men of his kingdom to his court and asked them if anyone could make his sons learn and make them fit to rule the kingdom. He promised to give them a lot of wealth in return. As all men knew how foolish his sons were, no one volunteered to take up the challenge. Just then, a versatile teacher, Vishnu Sharma, spoke up and took up the challenge. He also told the king that he didn't want any wealth, as his knowledge was not saleable, and promised to change his sons to wise princes. Vishnu Sharma took them to his ashram and taught them by telling moral stories. My dears, these moral stories were called Panchatantra, Pancha means five and Tantra means principles. These principles gave insights into various concepts such as confidence, friendships, human relations, decision-making, problem-solving, effective communication, and so on. Pancha Tantra explains the conduct of life through stories, mainly using animals and birds as characters which is easily understood and loved by kids. Isn't it, my dear kids? asks Grandma. Yes, definitely, Grandma. This sounds so interesting. We can't wait to hear all the stories from Panchatantra. Please, please tell us all stories one by one every night, Grandma. Of course, my dear little ones. Now off you go to bed. May your dreams be as vibrant as the stories we share. The grandchildren wished their grandmother a very good night and went off to sleep. Grandma talks softly to herself. Ah, the gift of stories, I say. It's a legacy of love and culture, a bridge between the past and the future. As the room basks in the warm glow of the evening, the notes of the classical music continue to dance, carrying with them the echoes of cherished stories and the bonds of family.